If you want to nail your contrast in DaVinci Resolve and get professional looking results, you really need to understand three tools, Lift Gamma Gain, Contrast and Pivot, and Custom Curves. Now, I've been using DaVinci Resolve as a colorist for going on my third year, and I just started implementing custom curves as my part of my contrast workflow this year over my last two projects. I was working on a feature length movie as well as a short film, and those uh, projects called for a little extra punch than I was able to get out of contrast and pivot alone. Now, I will say that contrast is extremely subjective, so whether you're looking for that punchier, high contrast look or kind of a softer, low contrast, more subdued look, understanding these three tools, uh, how to use them and when to use them, and also how to think about them is really going to be the key for learning how to manipulate the contrast to get the exact look that you're going for on your footage. Here we are on the color page and I've got four example clips ready to go to help us talk about lift gamma gain, contrast and pivot, and custom curves. Now these first three clips needed more contrast and this fourth one actually needed a little bit less contrast. And one of the keys that we're gonna uncover while going through these four clips, not each piece of footage is gonna need all three tools. Sometimes lift gamma gain and contrast and pivot is gonna be just enough. There's even been times where adjusting my lift gamma gain to kind of reevaluate my lighting ratios has nailed the contrast straight out of the gate. Usually for me, it's lift gamma gain plus contrast and pivot. And on some of these shots, like on this one, I just needed a little extra punch with a custom curve. So let's start back here on my first clip. And as we can see here, this is a very simple node tree with just an exposure adjustment, contrast and pivot, and saturation adjustments. Now, often when I'm trying to nail in my contrast, I'll throw a little saturation on the image first just so I've got a better view of what I'm looking at. So that's already helping me to see kind of a more normal image. And then I'm gonna to go to my exposure first. And this is where lift gamma gain, if our exposure is kind of sitting in the right spot, lift gamma gain is gonna help us reevaluate those lighting ratios. So for this instance, if we use my qualifier pen, we can see my skin is sitting right about 640 which is a good place for where I like having my skin tone uh, when I'm delivering to YouTube or social media. However, if we look at my waveform, we can see that my black levels are crushed all the way down to zero. So let me go ahead and reset this node and we'll use our lift control to bring that bottom end up to about a 40 IRE level. All right, so that's looking a little bit better on the bottom end. We've got some more detail here but it also impacted our skin tones and our highlights by pushing those up a little too far. So I'm just gonna grab the highlight slider and drag this down minus 100. And you can see by doing that, I've already got some more color back in my face. And that's all I really needed to do to keep my skin tones right at about a 55, 60. And my blacks are at about that 40 IRE level. I gained some more detail back in my forehead, but the image is now much more washed out and we lost all of our contrast. So going over to a separate node here, just so that we can see the contrast and pivot, if we turn this on, now I've got all that contrast back just with a contrast and pivot tool and actually a special, special part of the custom curve, which is this low soft. So talking through this um, rather quickly, when you use your contrast slider, all you're doing is effectively increasing your gain and lowering your lift. You're separating your highlights from your shadows around the pivot point. And this pivot point corresponds to an IRE level on your waveform. And if you have no other reason to do anything special, it's really handy to set your pivot to middle gray. That way you can kind of lock in that middle gray point and your highlights above 0.336 or all your highlights above middle gray will get brighter and all of your shadows below middle gray will get darker. And that's just a good rule of thumb for getting a really natural contrast adjustment by locking in your pivot to middle gray. Now DaVinci Wide Gamut has a middle gray of 0.336, but something important to know about middle gray, like Canon C-Log3 I think is 0.38, uh, S-Log3 for Sony is gonna be something different and Blackmagic B-Raw is gonna be something different as well. Each color space has its own middle gray. 
So if you take your camera footage and convert it into DaVinci Wide Gamut, you can then use a middle gray of 0.336 and then convert that DaVinci Wide Gamut out to Rec. 709. And this is really handy for multicam projects if you happen to be shooting on two you know, different cameras. And if those cameras have different middle gray points, but they're both converted into DaVinci Wide Gamut, you can now use the same node tree with the same middle gray point on all footage from all cameras because you've effectively unified that middle gray by going into DaVinci Wide Gamut. Okay, so pivot is effectively locking in your contrast adjustments to rotate around middle gray or to rotate around your pivot point. So if you wanted to increase your pivot point, all of my values below 0.6 are getting darker and the values above 0.6 are getting brighter. And if you lower your pivot, now all of my values above 0.164 are getting brighter and the values below 0.164 are getting darker. So let's take this back to 0.336 and that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, so that's contrast and pivot. And a way that you can control your contrast and pivot is in the custom curves with this low soft tool. Now look at my waveform here. We can see that adding contrast pushed our blacks a little bit lower than I would prefer here on my waveform. If we drag our low soft slider up, we can control that black point. And that's without even getting into a custom curve. So low soft has saved me in so many cases where I maybe can't even see the difference here between my low soft on or off, but you can surely see it on the waveform. So that's a little trick, setting your pivot to middle gray and then managing that black point with your low soft is really, I would say it's a, a great method to be able to control your contrast. So now between lift gamma gain and contrast and pivot, we've managed our image to a place that I'm quite happy with. And if you wanna save space on your node tree, you can definitely do contrast and pivot in your exposure node. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Change our pivot to 0.336, which is middle gray for DaVinci wide gamut. And then we'll just start increasing our contrast till we're happy with it. I'd say maybe around there. Go over to our custom curves and control our low soft by bringing that up just a tad. And let's see, we increased our contrast to 1.17. Over here, we went 1.148. So pretty close. Maybe that looks a little better. So now we've got contrast and pivot and lift gamma gain on the same node. And we've effectively controlled this image with exposure and saturation, and we're looking way better. And for the longest time, that's all I was doing with my images, lift gamma gain, contrast and pivot, getting great results and not overthinking it at all. And the trick, setting that pivot point to your middle gray and controlling your backs with the low soft point. Let's go over to this clip, for example. I just controlled my exposure basically by lowering my highlights minus 100 and then increasing my gain a tad. Here, let's turn all these off and let's just reset this. So highlights down 100 and I'm fine if the top end of my waveform here is going up to a 95, which is where I have my second reference level set point. And we'll just increase my gain right there at about 106. Okay, so again, we had the same issue as before where I controlled my luminance, but the image is still a little washed out. Jump over to contrast and pivot. Set your pivot to 0.336 and increase your contrast, in this case to 1.09. But let's reset that. Let's see if we get to the same point. I'm thinking about right there looks pretty good. So we've got a lot of contrast back. This looks pretty appropriate. And my waveform is between my 95 on the top end and 40 on the low end. So that's looking good as far as my waveform is concerned. But the image, it still looks a little off to me. And let's look at our skin tone here. We're sitting right at a 50. So skin tones are good. Overall luminance values are looking really good on the waveform, but it's still lacking contrast. And I've already adjusted my contrast and pivot to get them where I want. That's where our custom curve is gonna come into play. And we can shove a little more punch into the lower end here, and we can control our highlights. 
So let's go ahead and reset this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So make sure you have editable splines turned on and the key that I've found with using a good custom curve and curves never worked for me until I figured out this trick. Use your qualifier pen to make a selection on the cheek and maybe even the forehead of your talent. That will lock in those values right there. So when you make your curve adjustments, our face is not changing. But let's go ahead and add some more contrast in. And we can control our black point just like we did with the low soft by raising this toe of our curve up a little bit. And I'm gonna say, that's looking good, pretty good right there. So look at all that contrast we brought back in just by adding that custom curve and locking in the values on the face. And if we wanna go even further, we can pull the top end of our waveform down a little bit and then smooth out the S curve. And let's keep our highlights right here at just under this 95 level. And that's looking pretty good to me. Now, if you've gone too far with your custom curve, you can go back to your contrast and pivot, and then you can take some of that contrast out. Then maybe you go back to your custom curve, and maybe you wanna bring a little bit more of that low end back into the picture. Now, a good way to think about this custom curve is kind of reallocating your shadow distribution back down towards wherever your black point is. If you just use your contrast and pivot, you're separating top and bottom. If you use this custom curve, you can just reallocate that bottom part of the curve and kind of put a little bit more density into the shadow region of your waveform here. And again, you can see over here, we have a little soft clip action just to keep in check our black point there on our lower 40 IRE level. Now, if you like the look I've got here for this scene, I have a full video on the look breakdown. You can see we took this image from its Rec 709 to a really different looking, but natural looking final image. So I was really happy with this. There's a video on my YouTube channel. I think it's my last video, color grading breakdown on how to get this exact look. Okay, this is a good example of just using lift gamma gain and highlights. We got all that contrast back without doing anything else. So looking at our waveform here, we can see we need to lower our lift. Let's get this back down a little bit. And then let's raise our gain. And I like our skin tones sitting between 50 and 60 for an image like this. And there's a whole bunch of contrast just from adjusting lift and gain. And if you remember, I just talked about this, increasing your contrast slider here is effectively the same as lowering your lift and increasing your gain. And then you could control your middle point with gamma if you needed to. A lot of times on my footage, I like to bring my highlights down to minus 100. And look at that just brought us in a whole bunch of extra detail on our skin tones. Now we can raise our gamma back up and get our luminance value where we want it. So that's looking pretty good to me just on lift gamma gain alone. Look at all this detail we brought back into our cheeks. And that key on this image was introducing our highlight slider. We were able to get all this extra nice looking skin tone by using our highlights down 100. So here's our highlights at zero and our gain at 1.06. Here's highlights minus 100 and gain at 1.2. And I haven't even done any contrast adjustments yet. This is just my lift gamma gain off and on. And I love this image. This is from a short film I just worked on, which is really funny, but we can talk about that in my next coming video. Okay, so this image is looking pretty good the way we've got it, but I wanted just a little more contrast. So I went first to my contrast slider because I had plenty of room on the high end and the low end to add in some more contrast with my slider. And this can be kind of a more easy way of adding more lift and more gain, uh, it's just easy using a contrast slider and it's one control instead of lowering your lift, increasing your gain. I like that every now and then. And we're locking that middle gray point in at 0.336. That's giving me a little extra. And using a custom contrast curve, 
just to, to a little reallocate some shadow area down into that lower end of our waveform, it took care of the background a little bit. So between my exposure, contrast and pivot and custom curve, it's a pretty subtle adjustment, but we gain all this detail back into our actor's face. And in this case, that's looking pretty contrasty and textured to me. I might even go back to my contrast and pivot and maybe take that out or readjust this as, as we can. But typically I'm going lift gamma gain, contrast and pivot, and then custom curve. And then if that's too much, maybe back to contrast and pivot. Again, I've got a whole look going on with this image here with some color contrast, some power windows, and a look node. But we can see the point of this video is lift gamma gain, contrast and pivot, and custom curves. Those alone are doing a whole bunch of heavy lifting. Okay, for our last example, let's go ahead and go to this clip. This is from that same short film. And we can on off our adjustments here. Way too contrasty, really um, a lot of color contrast, and really dark. So we just kind of just opened this up a little bit. And the way we did that, again, we can see our waveform is dipping below the 40 reference level. So let me reset this node. We'll bring that up just a tad. And I don't need to be sitting on top of my 40. I just kind of want this not dipping too far below it. And that's enough right there just to get a little bit of a little bit of more air and life into the image. And this is where the subjective part comes into play because I, I do like this dark and moody, but I felt opening it up a little bit would be more appropriate. And having a bunch of our image kind of at that 38 level is a good reference point for me. And then I did use a custom contrast curve here just to add a little bit more punch back into that low end while keeping our blacks at about the 40 IRE level. And you can raise and lower the bottom part of your waveform, or excuse me, the bottom part of your custom curve here, just to keep that waveform in check. So between exposure node and contrast node, we lightened it up while leaving it contrasty. And if we didn't have this contrast node, you can see it does just look a little too airy. Again, this one you could go either way. And my look is doing a lot on this as well. If you guys are curious about my look node, let me know in the comments below and we can get into that as well. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys today on lift gamma gain, contrast and pivot and custom curves. Hopefully that's a helpful overview of how to get really good contrast and three different tools you can use to manipulate your contrast. Okay, look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.